Well, it's Friday, the 14th of January 2022, and this is the Aftcast from Living with MS in Tenerife. Well, as you can tell, it's a little bit windy today on my balcony. They've got an alert for high winds. I hope the uh, microphone's still holding up. And, uh, but it's lovely and sunny, it's over 30 degrees in the sun, uh, direct sunlight, about 25 in the shade. Got a nice breeze coming in from the Sahara, well I'm saying a breeze is more like a gale. And uh, so the weather's pretty good here. And uh, if we take a look at the forecast, we've got sun all the way till Sunday. And then Monday, they're promising a thunderstorm. Now, it, this is way in the future, so it may not arrive. And also with the microclimates here, it's probably gonna be different anyway. Uh, and then it's sort of like sunny cloudy with 21 degrees as a high for the next 14 days. But it's always about the same. They always uh, sort of refine it after a while. So that'd be pretty good. So that was the weather for this week. They're still building over there, so you need the bee, the beep, beeping of the of the reversing trucks. I don't know what they're actually doing there. I think they're just uh, mixing hardcore so they can put it into the the road down here. But who knows? Who knows? So we'll go over to the uh, website of the government, and the headline today is Torres is committed to the recovery of the farms and agriculture infrastructure destroyed by the volcano on La Palma. So uh, he's committed to that. Uh, Marta Arocha takes office as the new Director General of Dependency and Disability. So we're giving her a call. <laughs> Health activates an automated process of temporary disability due to COVID-19 for patients of low complexity, it says here, but that's a, a Google translation. I'll have to look at the original in a minute to, uh, to find out what that means. But it looks like there is an automated process of temporary disability so that you can get, uh, get help, disability help. Uh, health counts 6,731 cases of COVID-19 in the last 24 hours on the whole of the Canary Islands. And the government reports favorably on the changes made to the REF by a state bill. I don't know what that is, to tell you the truth, but uh, if it's important, I'll let you know. Um, and this one's quite interesting. Health extends screening for national passengers arriving in the Canary Islands. Let's take a closer look at that one. Um, they're saying the extension will be valid till the 20th, until uh, midnight on February the 15th. This measure obliges people uh, arriving from other communities to present a COVID vaccination certificate, a diagnostic test of negative active infection, or the certificate of having passed the disease less than six months before the date of placement. So that means anybody coming from the mainland um, has got to either show a COVID certificate, a recovery certificate, or have a PCR test, which is cool. People arriving in the Canary Islands from another Spanish autonomous community must present a vaccination certificate against COVID-19 diagnostic test of having, of, or of having the infection or not more than six months old. Okay. That looks uh, quite reasonable. It stops people coming in from Spain without checks. And uh, that's a good thing, especially with nearly 7,000 new cases today. So let's have a look at Jan Ansk and see if she's got anything on there. Janice was a very, very good daily vlogger and she's retired now, but she still works. Uh, Spain is to treat COVID as endemic disease, not pandemic, once the sixth wave starts to flatten. Now, that's quite interesting. Now, let me read this one. So let's put read more on there. Uh, the Spanish health secretary, Carolina Darias, has announced that the country will start dealing with COVID as an endemic disease rather than a pandemic one once the curve of the sixth wave has been flattened. For those who don't know quite what this means, it's not good news. It means that COVID will be treated as always present in some form or another, even though no less severe of a virus. Some future variants may be less severe, others might be worse. Some might become immune or escape immunity to any vaccine. All we have is current measures 
uh, all we have is current measures many of which are now clearly remain in place and high vaccination rates so that we have our best defense against something that is never going to go away uh, some of us have tried to explain over the two years ago the new normal so that so hated term is indeed now completely normal and here to stay all who objected to the health measures or refused to comply with masks distancing and refused to even take care of their nearest dearest let alone themselves by getting vaccinated have achieved this as a direct result it's on you who complained the loudest and will no doubt scream that measures kept in place prove that was all about control and from the off but all that has been achieved is ensuring that when it is so hated will now be with us for all life for those of us who never had a problem being socially responsible life goes on the new normal now being completely normal well janet i agree with you on that and uh, i'm not sure whether it's uh, it's their fault that it's endemic but uh, it was a major contribution to us not beating the disease so but again we haven't beaten flu and uh, we live with that so we just hope that the existing variant uh, continues to be low mortality rate or lower than normal and that the newer variants don't get even worse so uh, thanks for that janet uh what else we got a foretaste of spring with tenerife's rutas de almendras a floor fragrant walks amongst clouds of almond blossoms yeah we do almond blossom walks every year and so if you're interested in that and you're uh, you need to get in there early to get a seat or to get a place on the walk. Uh, it's run typically by the, uh, the government and usually in Giedizora. Um If you go over to Janet Anscombe's website and take a look there, then uh, there are a few different types of walks you can go on. A, an easy one, a hard one, and there is even one for wheelchair users also. So, uh, Go to Janet Anscombe there to find out more about that. Thank you, Janet. Now I want to talk about my diet. I've had a lot of people contact me with lots of great information and uh, suggestions. <coughs> Excuse me. And I found that maybe using the word diet isn't actually um, telling you exactly what I'm doing. So I'm not actually going on a diet to lose weight. So I'm not like cutting down on my calories and then weighing myself and seeing if I've lost weight and, and get to a, a, a specific weight and say a success. What I've decided to do is to change my lifestyle. So my lifestyle in the past is a typical Tenerife lifestyle. Get up late, drink copious amounts of alcohol and eat fantastic food. And for two weeks a year on holiday, that's great. But if you live here, it's not very conducive to having a healthy body. I never professed to having a healthy body in the past and uh, I still don't have one now. But what I've decided to do is to change my lifestyle. Now my lifestyle was a lot of work I have a lot of work looking after Chris and the house. Then I have a lot of work doing all the shopping, cooking, cleaning and what have you. And also creating these videos is quite a lot of time. I mean, I see it as fun, but it takes a lot of time to do this. And, um, and also other stuff that I'm doing, you know, learning new skills or just informing myself. It takes a lot of time as well. And I've been offsetting that by nipping out in the afternoon, doing a bit of shopping, and then whacking a couple of pints down. And then going to the shop and maybe having a bit of a takeout. And then I'm having a cooking beer, and then I'm having a glass of wine, and then I'm having another glass of wine, and then at the end I'll have a brandy. So it works out between three and four beers a day, a half a bottle of wine, and a couple of brandies. And if you do that seven days a week, and you're cooking food in astronomical portions so there's like four portions on the table and I'm just eating it until it's gone then no wonder I've gone up to 118.7 kilos which is nearly 19 stone I think or maybe even over which is not healthy and I was quite happy being overweight I was quite happy, quite happy being fat and jolly I was filling out my skin so I don't get wrinkles uh, but now I think that I need to come down a bit and the only way I can do that is to change my lifestyle. 
so no four beers a day, half a bottle of wine, brandy and double portions. So I've decided now is I'm drastically cutting down on the alcohol, which I have done. So I didn't have a drink uh, since Saturday last week or some, well, nearly a week ago. Last night I went out and had a pint because I just fancied it. So it's not that I'm giving up alcohol, but I haven't had wine during the week. We're gonna have a glass of wine tonight and I am going out to do Freaky Friday tonight. So that means I will be having a beer. And, but it's not cheating because I'm, uh, that's my new lifestyle. Have a beer at the weekend, not four beers a day. And also I'm making well, what I call half portions, but basically they're normal portions. <coughs> and that's gonna be um, for the rest of my life. So it's not a diet, it's just I'm just changing it. It's, I'm not going back. To, to what I was. So thanks to everybody who suggested these short uh, temporary diets that you can go on and lose weight and get to a goal and measure yourself and all that stuff. But that's not what I'm doing. I'm just changing my life and see what happens. And I'll keep letting you know what happens. So I'm photographing everything that I eat and well, 99% of what I eat. Sometimes I'll have something and forget to photograph it, but uh, that's okay. So that you know what I'm doing. And also um, I'm gonna start walking again when I got rid of this cough. <coughs> I just hope it doesn't become chronic. I'll uh, see what happens when I get my decongestant today. So I'm gonna get a decongestant, uh, but I don't think I need antibiotics. And I don't particularly want them anyway, because antibiotics are last resort for me because eventually they'll stop working and the human race will die anyway. So don't take antibiotics if you don't 100% need them, please. And don't self-medicate, like have them and say, oh, I'll take them now. Uh, I know a lot of people who self-medicate and it's not doing you or the world any good by training germs to be resistant to antibiotics. Just remember that. Okay, so uh, oh, that's a terrible note to end on, isn't it? So what about a nice note to end on? Oh yeah, I, um, I managed to get hold of, a, uh, of Netflix and, um, and Amazon Prime over the Christmas period, uh, dirt cheap. In fact, Netflix is free for me because I'm using a, uh, a card, a cash card from cryptocurrency and all I had to do was to invest a little bit of cryptocurrency in the card and they give me Netflix for free. So, uh, well actually they pay me back on the card. Uh, plus they pay me a couple of percentage. Uh, I'll, leave a, I'll leave a link actually in the, uh, in the description if you want to get your own card. And if you use that link, I get 25 bucks and you get 25 bucks. So uh, that's, it's a win-win for both of us. So if you use that link uh, to get this card, it's a cash card, so you gotta put cash on it. And then um, you start spending on it and you get a certain amount back for every purchase. And depending on how much you invest into the thing, I think the minimum is 350 euros, so don't do it's not for free. You invest 350 euros as a minimum and you get a certain amount back. To get Netflix for free, you've got to invest 3,500 euros. But uh, it is an investment into cryptocurrency, um, which fluctuates obviously, so just don't look at it every day. And uh, eventually over, over the years, it will definitely become uh, more than the 3,500. Uh, it'll drop again, drop below and go up, drop below, go up, but don't even worry about it. So check that one out. Uh, I'm not sponsored to do that. It's, well, I am sponsored actually because I would get 25 bucks only if you sign up. So that's a disclaimer there. They're not telling me what to say. It's my, I think I've got to be careful if I'm promoting something. So uh, that was the AFCAS for today. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for watching. And I'm hoping to do these more often. Not every day, unfortunately. But uh, if there's anything else you want to see on here, and uh, when I get a bit better, I might even interview somebody, then uh, let me know. It's Tim Dow for Living with MS and Tenry signing off. Bye. <laughs>